largest building in the world at the time falling on top of it. Well, now so we're, we're we talk about that. We'll take it's apples and oranges time. here. Okay. Sure. So there was some damage to Building Seven. Absolutely, from Tower One. And now NIST. Right. Do you know what NIST tells us about that damage from Tower One to Building Seven? They say no significant factor at all. This building collapsed due to normal office fires. Yes, that's what normal, they say. And in fact, the office fires they say were uh, were were fully engulfed in the building. Uh -huh. And yet we have no examples of large uh, fires. Eight to ten fairly small fires is what we have. Mm -hmm. The worst uh, fires on video and photographic evidence. Yes, yes, Richard. But but most of those videos were in a safe zone, correct? We couldn't get a lot of video evidence around the other building. That side was engulfed in flames. Actually, we and that's what the BBC documentary that debunked a lot of what you said had to say about that. We saw firefighters talking about that entire building was fully involved. I mean, that's a that's so a firefighter. We do have uh, videos from all around the building. Yeah, yes, we do. We, the we north have a side, few on. There's a few small fires. The south side had a lot of smoke, but no visible flames. Uh, so we do. When, when, when there's smoke, Richard, there's what? When there's smoke, you would expect there to be fire. Yes. But right. the fire's not hot enough to have its flames coming out through the windows or visible behind the windows. Then it's a little bit suspicious. And the, so that's why we're asking sure. for a real investigation. Does it bother sure. you that this building came? Straight down, let me finish. Sure, sure. Straight down as fast as a freely falling brick from the top of this building. This building crushes 40,000 tons of structural steel. Does that make any sense to you? Well, I'm not an engineer that has, de de no, no, that has designed skyscrapers. Forget engineering. I'm going to drop a brick over here, and over here I'm going to drop another brick, and it's going to have lots of resistance. 40,000 tons of structural steel. Which one? One's gonna hit the ground first. I mean, I'm not the a one without any resistance. Sure, it's just, but this is seventh grade physics. Sure. So, well, I'm a, I'm a high school history teacher, so I'm uh -huh. not. I'm, physics isn't my expertise. Uh -huh. But Richard, let, let me tell you something else that bothers me. The the Thank idea. You Thank you very much. Appreciate your support. Ae911truth.org. Crazy what? I said it takes crazy superheating to make steel disappear. Well, yeah. In, in, in fact, there are several tons of molten iron found at the base of all three of these towers. Right. None of which is document is is in the evidence of NIST or FEMA, and yet is seen by dozens of first responders. In fact, the World Trade Center structural engineer Leslie Robertson himself. Why couldn't they acknowledge that there was all of this molten metal? I'll just finish my point here, because if they did. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Had they acknowledged it, they would have had to s acknowledge that fires alone, which are only 15 to 1700 degrees, cannot possibly have created several tons of molten iron. Doesn't happen. But what can? Let, let me Thermite. You, Thermite cr creates molten iron as its byproduct. And we have the chemical evidence of thermite in the dust, in the molten iron, and in the slag at the ends of the beams. Can, now can, it's your can turn. I, can I reveal, reveal what reformed me? What really yeah. bothered what, what, me? What really bothered you? Uh, Larry Silverstein's quote, and how oftentimes we implicate Pullet. Sure, he was using some sexy language. Um, but if you target the conversation, who's Larry Silverstein speaking to? And I saw you speaking about this briefly with the debate with Mark Roberts from uh -huh. New York. Um, who's, who's he addressing then? And he makes it clear in that PBS documentary, he's talking to the firefighters. Yeah, and if he says, and if you say that the firefighters are any way involved with the collapse of Building 7, you're in a dangerous oh, position, no, my friend. Larry Pris Silverstein who said was, that. I don't implicate sure. them whatsoever. But he was, having a, firefighters were, he was having a conversation with the firefighters. Well, let's tell the, the viewers what we're talking about. Larry Silverstein uh, is having a, a conversation with the commander, and he says, uh, well, "There's been such Nigro, was it? I think was it so. Daniel Nigro? I think so. He says there has such been such terrible loss of life. Maybe the smartest thing to do is pull it. And he said, and, and so, they pulled it. And so and the, we watched the building fall down. You're right. implicating the fire department in New York, an organization that lost 300 brothers in there. No, I'm not implicating they, them whatsoever. It's uh, Mr. Silverstein who's implicated them. But who's he having the conversation with, Richard? Can you just tell me that, Chief Chief Daniel Nigro, the best." decision is for us, us. Yeah, but the firefighters don't pull buildings. Abs they pull operations out. Neither they does, weren't neither even says. in the building to fight the fire, though. That's neither the whole does. point. 
Exactly. And that's another thing, Richard. They that's weren't a, that's fighting the thing. fire. Richard. They had given up. That, that, that's another thing there. So how we, could we, he pull we, them out if they weren't in in the first it place? It would be unfair to have the conversation because 9-11 was a day of firsts. I think no matter what side of the coin you come on, we, we can admit that. 9-11 was a day of firsts. That's one of the first buildings in history that hadn't been fought by fires because um, when Tower 1 came down, severed the um, the lines that uh, that brought the sprinklers down. Yeah, no indeed. sprinklers were coming. That's true. Except in the bottom floors, I think. There were some sprinklers going on I think on it there. was the bottom floors that didn't have sprinklers on but the top floors. But building floor. wasn't being fought. I mean, all the other buildings have sprinklers going on right. everywhere. No, I These, agree. They're waterfalls. I agree. But fire would have brought the building down if it brought it down at all because it never has a high-rise steel but frame building. But we can't use that as a control. But it would have brought the building down asymmetrically, it's, it's, not it's, straight it's, down through the path of greatest resistance. Let me make one more sure, point. Sure. In order to bring a building straight down, you have to cut all 24 core columns, in this case, within a fraction of a second of each other. Otherwise, the building tips, no. and it didn't do that. It's great to meet you. I really appreciate it, it talking to you. You, you mind you. if I get a picture of you, sir? No, I Because, I mean, I've, I've... You got a camera? I've, right. Here. All right, let's do it. <laughs> okay. And, and, and Here we I'm, are, I'm by coincidence, in Washington, yeah. D.C. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's a I, I did J ref a little bit. You mind if I, I bet you do. Shake. And unfortunately, we're going to catch an airplane. Okay. So, um, what's your name? My name's Kevin. Kevin. On the J on the J ref forum, I was uh, the debunking director. The debunking director. Awesome. So we, well, unfortunately, we've got to catch an airplane. We're going back to Berkeley today. We've been speaking with the debunking director at the J ref forum in front That's of the of White House. But it's kind of coincidental that you're all here today. It's very coincidental. We we got to have a nice conversation. I wish we could have more, have lunch together. I would love to. But um, we're going to have to catch this plane. And thank you. It's great to meet you too. Likewise. Okay. Careful there, Richard. Thank you. All right. Thank you. You too, Kevin. So we'll uh, catch the airplane and we'll keep going. My best. Thank you. Bye bye. I'm from Sydney, Australia, and I think it's all a cover-up, and I think it was all um, planned, and I think we should find the truth eventually, hopefully. What's your name? Andrew. How do you play your lesson? Um, I don't want to give that. Okay. <laughs> Thank you.